You're watching the Nokia XR20 disassembly. If you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, as always, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Once the SIM tray is removed, we need to use a hairdryer or a heat gun to apply heat to the back plate so we can loosen up the adhesive underneath and then we're going to use a plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. So here's a better look at the plastic back plate. If you happen to break the glass camera lens cover over here, it's held down with adhesive so all you would have to do is heat up this portion a little bit and gently pry it off. There are 18 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Once all the screws are removed, the top and bottom plastic covers can be lifted up and removed. There are two light gray colored antenna lines drawn on this top plastic cover. There's also some graphene film over here. On the other side, we can see the LED flash board over here. At this point, the battery cable needs to be disconnected. Once we remove this plastic cover over here, underneath it, there's a flex cable over here, which connects the speaker assembly to the subboard over here. So these two contacts over here, touch these two contacts here, as well as these two over here, make a connection with these two, giving it signal. Now the speaker assembly can be lifted up and removed. Taking a better look at the speaker assembly, there is a mesh filter or cover over here, over the opening. On the inside of the frame, there's also a rubber gasket over here by the opening for the speaker. Now we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the flex cables. This right here in the center would be the wireless charging coil, as well as the NFC antenna bordering it. Here's a better look at it. On the back side, there's some graphene film. This flex cable over here connects the main board to the sub board as well as the charger port flex cable. There are two Phillips screws holding on the charger port which need to be removed. Now we can lift up and remove the charger port. Here's a better look at the charger port and it does have a rubber gasket around it. Now we can go ahead and disconnect the screen cable. And then we can disconnect the flex cable for the fingerprint scanner. There are three wire cables or coaxial cables we need to disconnect. One is located right over here, one here, and one over here. We can disconnect those by just popping them off. There's a protective tape over here covering the connector for the front facing camera which needs to be peeled off so we can disconnect the front facing camera and remove it. In order to remove the main board there are two Phillips screws one located right here and one over here which need to be removed. We also need to disconnect the flex cables for the 48 megapixel and 13 megapixel cameras. Now the main board can be lifted up and removed. There's a secondary microphone located over here on the top corner of the main board. Here's another look at it with our removable shield removed. On the back side we can see a SIM reader and memory card reader located over here, as well as a proximity sensor located right over here. We can also see thermal paste on top of the shield over here, and some copper tape over here. Once the removable shields on the back are removed, we can see these chips over here, as well as the processor over here which has thermal paste on top of it. We can also see some thermal paste on top of this chip over here, and the one over here underneath the copper tape. Now these two coaxial cables need to be disconnected. There's one flip screw over here which needs to be removed that's holding down the subboard. Now the subboard can be removed. On this subboard, the main microphone is located right over here. Here's a look at the other side. When it comes to removing the battery, there are pull tabs provided to help you pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the battery. And even with those provided pull tabs, it was pretty difficult prying this battery off. 
With the battery removed, we can see the flex cable for the screen, which is routed through this opening over here in the mid frame. So if you had to replace your screen, you would have to take the back plate off, remove the screws on the top cover, as well as remove the top cover itself, and then you disconnect the battery cable and the screen cable, remove the battery and the pull tab adhesive underneath it in order to gain access to the flex cable, and then you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. You'd pry the old screen off, get your new screen, apply new adhesive and reapply the new screen and reassemble your phone. Moving on, the headphone jack is located down here and the flex cable is over here for it. It's just held down with adhesive so if you want to replace that, you'd have to pry it off. The vibrator motor is located over here which is also held down with adhesive. And there's a small antenna board over here connected with a coaxial cable which runs along the side over here and connects to the main board. You can see the flex cable over here for the volume keys on this side. And there's a flex cable over here for the button on this side. The earpiece speaker is located over here on top and it's held down with adhesive. If you want to replace that, just apply some heat and gently pry it off. These two cameras are also held down with some adhesive. And finally, there's a copper heat plate over here which sits underneath the motherboard. And for those wondering, the borders of the phone are rubberized, but the mid-frame itself is aluminum. And it's very strong, even with all the parts removed. It's difficult to bend it. As far as repairability goes on this phone, I would give it a 6.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once all your screws are back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply your backplate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. Thanks again for watching guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video.